That's the goal. Amen? I just simply want to preach on coming out. Amen? Coming out. Praise the Lord. I'm glad that the Lord brings us out. And I know it maybe will sound crazy to some, but uh, you know, there's times in our life where we go through hurt, hurt that we really feel, and hurt that sometimes can make us cry. And uh, it may sound uh, crazy, but uh, what we need to do when we're going through the fire is we need to praise God. We need to praise God. And you know, uh, Brother Seville has been preaching over the last several weeks about praising God and the effects that it has upon life. And so uh, I want us to understand that the king, the three most mighty men, they died in the fire. Amen. And, but it's a miracle with what God did for those who were His. Amen. When we go through the fire, amen, God takes care of us. And uh, let me just say this this evening. Amen. Uh, there's, sometimes we may wonder, God, how did I make it this far? You know, there are some here tonight that really if you would have traveled down the path that you had started, maybe there were some that you should have died of, of alcoholism or maybe even drugs or maybe even a deep depression that maybe you would have taken your own life. But I want to tell you this evening that you are here because God allowed you to be here. Amen. God has His hand upon your life. Amen. God knows what He's doing in you. Amen. God, God's plan is so big this evening. Amen. And, and uh, there maybe will be other people that would, would look at you and say, you shouldn't have made it. You should not have made it. But God knows what He's doing. Amen. Sometimes it may be that moment out of the house late that, that, that spares us being in an accident. Maybe there were some that you were in an accident before. People will look at that vehicle and say, I don't know how they came out alive. But let me tell you, God knows what He's doing. God's hand is on your life. Amen. God knows exactly what He's doing this evening. And uh, there are a lot of people this evening, Sister Tina, you were saying about being in prison. There are some people that are in prison tonight that maybe has even done less than what some folks here have done. Amen. But the hand of God is upon our lives. Amen. God knows what He's doing. Amen. God knows what He's doing that you are even here this evening. And I want to tell you that uh, even this tonight, even though some may say, I'm in the fire, Pastor. I'm in the fire. I want to tell you, thank God that God allowed you to go far enough that you can make it to the fire. Some people don't make it that far. Amen. Some people do not have the ability to make it to the fire. I've already read lots of Scripture this morning. I'm not going to choose a particular text. I'm going to go through the whole chapter and look at it the way that we did this morning. But you remember that, that King Nebuchadnezzar commanded three of his mightiest men to go and get Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to bind them up and to put them into the fire. But these three men themselves, though they were strong and though they were mighty, amen, uh, they did not make it any further. I'm just going to stop right there because I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. But God knows what He's doing. He puts you where He wants you. He saved you. He's filled you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Don't complain when you go through the fire. Some folks don't even make it through the fire. Right, right. Yep. Amen. It's a good thought tonight. Amen. Some folks don't make it to the fire. Some folks don't know God. Some folks don't have the opportunity to life. Uh, God has His hand on you. Amen. Uh, some of you tonight could testify that when you weren't saved, that God was watching over you. Yeah. Some of you could testify that when you weren't serving the Lord, that God gave His angels charge over you. Amen. He delivered you. Amen. He knew that, that you would come to where you are today. Amen. And he had a divine plan for your life. Amen. Uh, maybe a few years ago, no one thought that you would ever be a Christian. Maybe some thought that you would never be living for God the way that you are. But praise God. God has His hand upon your life. Amen. He's working in you. The Holy Ghost is moving in you. Amen. God has brought you to a mighty good place. And you may say, but pastor, I'm in the fire. Well, hold on. I want to tell you, I'll get you out of the fire tonight, but allow me to bring you up to where you're at the fire. 
Amen. God has His hand on you. God's working. God's moving. God knows exactly what He's doing in your life to yeah. even bring you to the fire. Here are these three mighty and strong men that did not make it. Amen. Someone say tonight, thank God for the fire. Amen. Amen. I just want to remind you, amen, that, that somebody is with you even before you got in the fire, and He's going to be with you while you're in the fire, and He's going to bring you out of the fire. In fact, tonight, if you think that you're in the fiery furnace trial of your life, or you're in the fire, I want to tell you that God did not bring you to the middle of it to leave you. God did not do that. God had His hand upon you till you got there. God has His hand on you while you're there. And God's going to deliver you out of it. Amen. Somebody's going to come out. Yeah. Amen. The child of God is going to come out. God would not bring us where He did not take us through. I know that someone may say tonight, well, hey, I'm going through the fire and I feel the heat and, and this fire is real and, and it hurts. Yes, I understand that, but God's with us in the middle of the fire. Amen. You're going to make it through the fire tonight. Think of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They went into the fire and God brought them out. God is going to bring you out. There's going to be fire upon you. Amen. You ain't going to smell like fire. Amen. Your clothes aren't going to be burned. You're not going to be hurt, but God is going to bring you out. Your eyebrows won't be singed and you won't even smell like smoke. God's going to bring you out because that's what God does in the middle of the fire. Amen. Praise God for that. Amen. God's coming out. God's bringing us out. I want us to think about those that the king chose. His strongest, his best. He brought the very best out to take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the fire. You may say, Brother Seville, I'm fighting a spiritual battle on a level that I've never fought before. I'm fighting like never before. It is a battle that's strong. It's a battle that's difficult. I want you to know that the enemy tonight is bringing his best out yeah. against you. Nebuchadnezzar brought his best men out to throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fire. Amen. I want to tell you, the devil is bringing the big dogs out. He's bringing the big guns out tonight. Amen. He knows that you're getting close to your destiny. He knows you're getting close to your purpose. He knows that you're getting closer to having a greater anointing than what you ever had before. And so the enemy is doing his best to bring out his best against you. And the Bible says that, that when he brings out, the Nebuchadnezzar brought out his best, us, that they bound Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen. The enemy this evening, the first thing he wants to do is he wants to bind you. Yeah. The enemy loves to bind God's people. He loves to fight against them. He loves to bring them to the fire, the test of their life. He will bind them. He will restrict them. He will, he will contain them. He will take away your liberty. But I want you to know something, that your liberty tonight is not in any Thing that the devil can bind, but your liberty this evening is in the freedom of God. Yeah. There is nothing that the enemy can take from you. We are free in God tonight. God is the one who gives us our freedom. And the enemy, he loves, he loves to take people and make them think that he can restrict their liberty, that he can contain them, that he can restrict them. He loves, he loves when he takes praise away from God's people. He realizes that when God's people pray, there is a liberty that is in them like none other. And so He is going to try to take your liberty away. He's going to try to contain you. He's going to try to quiet you down. He's going to try to push you down or back you up to quiet us, to put a lid on us, to dampen us. He's going to get us all tangled up in fear. Amen. And He's going to get us worried and anxiety and fear because He knows the power that our praise has if He can rob it from us. Praise is powerful tonight. 
Think about it. My wife just sang that, that when Paul and Silas, in the midnight hour, they were in the jail, they began to sing and they began to praise God. And God began to open up. He began to set loose uh, all those chains. He opened up doors. Amen. Praise has amazing things in our life. Amen. And the, the devil knows that when he brings us to the door of the furnace or he throws us in the furnace, he wants to rob our praise. But praise is going to be the element that gets us out of there. Praise is going to be the thing that brings us deliverance, deceive me. He said, cast them into the fiery furnace. And not just a fiery furnace, he said. But what did the king ask to be done to the furnace? Create it seven times home, then once again. Amen. The furnace alone speaks of our trials, our pain, our adversity. But when you heat it up seven times hotter, it becomes more intense. It becomes more painful, doesn't it? And you know what? I'm, I'm talking to some folks tonight that you're facing attacks like you've never faced before. You know, the attack seems more aggressive than it's ever been. The night seems darker. The, 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 it seems deeper than it's ever been. The hurt, it seems to last longer. But I want to remind you of something good this evening that God is going to bring you out of the fire. Amen. I'm going to say this this evening. I'm speaking prophetically. That God is going to bring you out of the fire. All oh, the enemy may bring you in there. He may tell you that you're in the fiery furnace, but there is something that good that's going to come out of the fiery furnace. Here they are, and they are cast into the fiery furnace. If you read in Daniel chapter number 3, you'll read that they fell down. How many of you, let's be transparent tonight, has ever fallen down in your faith walk? And I know that we're folks of faith tonight. We believe in faith. We believe in standing. We believe in trusting God. But there are times in our faith walk, amen, where the enemy comes against us. He will push us. He will push the wind right out of us. He will push us on our backs. He will knock us down. Amen. Let's be transparent. Let's be honest. It does happen in our our walk of faith and our relationship with the Lord. This is exactly what happened in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were bound. They were thrown in. They, they, were, they were cast down. Amen. But I want you to know that the fact of the matter is that when the devil hits you, when it's unexpected, when he hits your heart, I want you to know that these boys did not find themselves bound for too long, but all of a sudden they found themselves loose and up and walking around. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. When I fall, I shall arise. Amen. Devil, you may knock the faith out of me for right now, but my faith is building up and I'm getting back up. There are times in our life where we will be knocked down. It'll want you wonder, man, I don't feel like I have faith to move a molehill versus a mountain. The enemy has knocked me down. But I want to tell you something. God allowed you to come into the fire and God is going to bring you out. Amen. I'm telling you something this evening. You may be knocked down, but you are going to get up. And you're going to find yourself loose and you're going to walk out. Amen. So this evening, if you feel like I just had all the faith in the world knocked out of me, the enemy has pushed me down. He's knocked my wind out. I want to tell you something. Begin to praise God. Amen. And knock the enemy down. Yeah. Our praise will knock the enemy down. The devil thinks he has you, but the fire can't stop you from praising. The devil thought he had you because he made you cry, but it ain't over. The enemy saw uh, 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 you go into the fire and he took pleasure in it. I want to say this, that probably every one of us have some type of an enemy. The devil is our enemy. There may be even folks who, who want to see us fail. There may be folks who want to see your demise. But I want to tell you this this evening. Amen. God spoke to Moses. And He said, Moses, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. 
Amen. He said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Amen. The enemy will pay. You don't need to worry about it. Your enemies will answer for it. You don't need to do anything about it. But what you need to do is while you're going through the fire is you just need to worship. You just need to praise. You need to get up and see that the bands are gone. That God is with you. And what the enemy, what your, your foes wanted for evil, God has used for good. And God is working for you. I'm telling you, the enemy may hit your heart, but we serve a God who is greater. Amen. We can serve a God who gives us our joy back. We can serve a God who gives us peace back. We can serve a God who can show us how to dance in the middle of the fire. Amen. Sometimes that's where we learn to dance. Sometimes that's where we learn to praise is in the middle of the fire. Amen. God wants us to know how to praise. The best place to learn how to praise is in the middle of the fire. Amen. Dance like you never danced before. Shout like you've never shouted before. Amen. Know that God is the one who can keep us from evil. Amen. All the snares and traps that the enemy has set out before us, God is greater than them. I want you to think about something this evening. Amen. Uh, God is able to walk right up to us in the middle of our fiery furnace trial, and He's able to deliver us. He's able to give us a song. He's able to give yes. us a dance. He's able to give us a shout. He's able to do anything. Think about the children of Israel. Amen. All it took was God just blowing through his nostrils. And all of a sudden the Red Sea opened up and three million people walked across on dry land. That's who's on your side. Yeah. Amen. When you go through the fire, when you go through the trial, amen, God is on your side. Yeah. Amen. He's the God who's able to shut up the lion's mouth and cause him not to bite you. Amen. He's a God who, who, can, who can create a super highway for you anywhere that you need to go. Amen. God is in control. The same fire that was intended to burn the three Hebrew boys up burnt the ones up that threw them in. God will take care of our enemies. God can take care of them. And they found out that they were liberated. Things that had them down. When they were in fire, they found something free. If I could do some more reflecting on my own life, there have been fiery furnace trials I've gone through in my life. Things that were very tough. The enemy jumped on board and pushed me down, knocked me over, knocked me around, threw me into the fiery furnace trial. But I want to tell you that it was there in the fire that I found that there were some things that I didn't need. I didn't need my self-righteousness. I didn't need things that I was contending on to be successful in life. I see that God was my success. There are times where we'll go through the fire and we'll realize that there are some things that God's going to do in our life that we don't need. He'll burn them up and He'll get rid of them because we don't need really they they, they keep us bound. I mean, you may think that sometimes that there, there are things that you hold on to in life that you think that are so important, but you find that they only keep you bound when you go through the fire and God wants to burn them up and show you the liberty that you can have when you get rid of them. Oh, praise God for the fire. Thank God for the times He takes us through the fire and we realize that there's some things that we no longer need in our life. He changes our heart. He changes our mind. He changes our life. Oh, praise God. He liberated them as they were in the middle of their fire. And I want to tell you something, that they may have heated the fire seven times hotter, but God was going to do something seven times more. I believe God can give you seven times more joy. God can give you seven times more peace. I believe that God can bless your pocketbook seven more times. I believe God can bless your health seven more times. I'm talking about a God who is able to deliver from the fire. But the greatest thing that I want to tell you is that God wants to give you seven times more the anointing than what you had before you went into the fire. God knows tonight about the fire. Listen, He liberates us. I'm telling you, He accelerates us too. He can do it seven times more than what we had before. God can work and move in our life. I'm talking about someone that sometimes we feel like we're in quicksand and we can't make a move. But God says, you know what? I'm going to accelerate things in your life. I believe God does want to bless His people. I believe God wants to bless you on your job. Amen. I believe God wants to bless you in your home. I believe God wants to bless you in your anointing and your touch. And sometimes it's through the fire that God uses that fire to just bring an acceleration in your life. 
Listen, there's nothing that can hold me back. There's no poverty. There's no sickness. There's no discouragement. Amen. God is able to do great things. But we're not at the end of the story yet, although I'm about to close. The king looked into the fiery furnace. And not only did he look in, and he called them out, but he publicly declared them to be the winners. I know sometimes we may not look at the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as two opposing teams, but it is. It is. It's God Almighty versus the God of this world. It's God Almighty versus the enemy and his lies and deceptions. And sometimes it may seem like we are in the fire. It may seem like we're hanging between the balances of God coming through for us. But here we find Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Here they were in confidence thrown into the fire. Uh, there they were by the very best thrown in. Sometimes the enemy uses his best weapons to throw us into the fire. Amen. But I want to tell you that as we're in the fire and we lose things that we don't need and, and we find out sometimes the things that we think are important, uh, they, they just have us bound up and God looses, looses us and all of a sudden we begin to walk in the midst of the fire. They, they, they expected them to look in and see men jumping and shouting and being burned, maybe smelling the burning of flesh. They expected to hear agonizing screams, but when they looked in, they saw three men, amen, and a fourth that looked like the Son of God, and they were up walking around. They were worshiping and they were praising. Let me tell you, in the middle of your fire, no God, you have brought me to the door. Some folks don't make it to the door. Some folks die at the door, but you brought me into the fire, and if you brought me in, you're going to bring me out, and in the middle of the fire, I will find you, and I will praise, and I will rejoice in you. Because on the other side, amen, we're going to be declared winners. Yep. We will be declared winners. Not only were they liberated from what bound them, not only were they accelerated as the fire was heated seven times higher and they seen God move for them, but they were elevated. The Word of God says that they were elevated in the kingdom. God wants to elevate folks. God has a kingdom tonight and He wants to elevate folks. And sometimes it's only as we go through the fire that we get that elevation. God, I want a greater anointing. I want to know you in a greater way. I want to have a greater faith. I want to have a closer experience with you where I see you. Sometimes it's not till we go into the fire that we see God. But I want to tell you that God is definitely the deliverer. And so sometimes the enemy will say, listen, you're in the middle of the fire. Listen, you're in the middle of a situation where it's difficult, it's painful, it hurts. You feel like you've been knocked down. You feel like your wind is knocked out of you. I want to tell you something. I see that as grounds to praise God. Yeah. Because God would have never brought you to the door if He wasn't going to see you all the way through. Yeah. Even the strongest didn't make it into the furnace. There's times I look at myself, Brother Justin, and I say, man, I was never the strongest. I was never the most popular. I wasn't all, all, never the, the smartest guy. I, I, I really don't deserve to go far. But you know what? God says, you know what? What you think is, is great. Yeah. Amen. Is a different opinion than what I see is great. Yeah. I see you as material that I can take into the fire and I will bring out. And I, I know that some folks have been dealing with sickness. I know that some folks have been struggling with family situations. I know that some folks have been wrestling with things. I want to tell you something. You may feel like you've been knocked down, but you've not been knocked out. And you may feel like you're in the fire. You're in a great place. Praise God for the fire. Because if God brought you to the fire, God's going to see you all the way through. Amen. Though it's hurt like it's never hurt before, God's going to see you through. Amen. Though it's been more painful than it's ever been before, amen. God has a greater anointing on the other side. God has accelerated things for you. God is going to accelerate you. God is going to liberate you. And God is going to elevate you. God is going to do great things in your life. I think it's reason for praise. 
Yeah. I think it's reason for praise. Yeah. Amen. When we go for the fire, I think I'll praise Him. He said to Isaiah, Though you walk through the waters, they shall not overtake you. And though you go through the fire, the flame shall not kindle upon you. Amen. God's promise is that everything will be alright. When the pressure is on, when the enemy is fighting in a greater way, God says it will be alright. I've had my hand upon your life. I brought you to the door. And I brought you to the fire. And I'm going to bring you out of the fire. So why don't you praise me? The enemy says, I'll constrict you. Amen. What the enemy sees as constriction, amen, God gives us liberty to worship Him. What the enemy sees us as accelerating and heating the fire hotter, God sees us accelerating and moving you to a greater place in Him and His kingdom. Amen. Because He's about to come. Amen. amen. Go to the fire. Fill the flames. Trials tough. He taught. I think we should just praise Him tonight. We should praise Him. Amen. Sister Beth, if you come to the piano, amen, I'm opening the altars this way. Tonight, amen, I know that we have believers here. Amen, I want you to come. And I want you to just praise Him. If you're in the fire, I want you to praise Him. Maybe you're facing things you've never faced before in your life. I want you to praise Him. You're here tonight because God allowed you to be here. Some folks don't make it to the door. God allowed you to be in the fire because He's going to bring you through. Begin to praise Him. Amen. There's going to be a greater anointing on your life when you're finished. There's going to be a greater joy. There's going to be a greater peace. There's going to be a greater touch than you've ever had before. Praise Him. Know that God is going to accelerate you. God is going to liberate you. And God is going to elevate you. God is going to do that. You may say, Brother, Brother Seville, you're preaching kind of charismatic tonight. Listen, I'm preaching the Word of God. This is what I see from God's Word. Amen. That as we praise Him, Amen, God will deliver from the fire. I don't see God ever leaving His people in the fire, but He brings them out. Amen. If your body's not been feeling good, Amen, I know some bodies have it. Praise Him. God's going to bring you through. Amen. If there's been financial struggles or there's been struggles that maybe the pastor don't even know about, I don't need to know about them. God knows. If the enemy has knocked you down, Amen, tonight I shall arise and I'll worship Him. The altars are open. Amen, tonight come and praise Him knowing that you're going to come through the fire and on the other side there's acceleration, liberation, and elevation for you. Would you come tonight? Amen.